Hello, hello, this is Father Adam greeting you with some good news that I know you can use in your daily life. When I was in the seminary, we had this spiritual guru, a priest who was very well known, come and talk to us about healthy spirituality, a healthy spiritual life and what that looks like. And during that retreat, one young man, a seminarian, got up and said, he no longer wanted to be a priest. He looked at the priest who was conducting the retreat and said, Father, I no longer want to be a priest. I want to leave the seminary because I do not want to be alone in this life. I want to have somebody. And the priest looked at him and said, But you are never alone. You always have God with you. And the young man said, But Father, I want to have sex. And the priest said to him, well, you're going to have to learn how to have sex with Jesus. <laughs> that was the biggest bunch of spiritual baloney and spiritual hogwash that I had heard up to that time. The young man was expressing a natural desire which is present in each and every human being to be in community, to be in intimacy, to be in connection with others, to not be alone, to not be in isolation. Now, the priest said, well, you know, you are never alone. You are always in the presence of God, and that should be all that is necessary for you. Why are you seeking a relationship or others or wanting to leave and have a life partner when you are always in God's presence, he said. Well, you know, in the book of Genesis, Adam, the first human being, is in paradise. He is in heaven and the definition of heaven, according to the Catholic Church, is the presence of God. So Adam is in God's presence. And yet, this is not enough. And God says, I'm going to make you a suitable partner. Because it is not good for man, for the human being, to be alone. And God makes Eve for Adam to complete him to fulfill him. And only then is Adam complete. It wasn't enough for Adam to be in God's presence, in that type of spiritual presence. Adam needed a physical presence of God, which God brought to him through the other, through the experience of the other. And that was Eve. Eve brought God for Adam. And that's what human beings do for us. They bring God into our life. If we profess God to be a trinity, then we profess God to be a relationship. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God isn't alone by Himself. He's not a one only, but a three in one. To make the one, the one God, the one cannot be one without the two. God is incomplete without the other two. God is with someone. God is the one entity that isn't alone. And we are to be like God. Because God made us in his image and likeness. So to be like God is not to be alone. God isn't just the Father, but the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And when you speak of the one, you speak of the other two. When you speak of the Father, you speak of the Son. And when you speak of the Son, you speak of the Father, and so on. When you speak of the Spirit, you speak of the Father and the Son. Jesus says this best when he says, when you see me, you see the Father. 
The Father is in me and I in the Father. The Father and I are one. We are together, says Jesus. You know, when my grandfather was dying of colon cancer after a lifetime of being an atheist, indoctrinated as such by the godless communists in Poland who brainwashed him, I remember him being in such pain as the cancer ate away at his body. And I heard him so often pray, looking up, God of my wife, help me, he would pray. Boże moje żony, pomóż me. For my grandma who loved him unconditionally, who when he would come home drunk, didn't call all of us and say, look at this drunk. She didn't belittle him. No, she took him to bed, took his clothes off, bathed him, made him comfortable, lay next to him, and she would tell us, Grandpa is sick. She was God to him through her love. And God is love. And so when we came to a desperate time, during his illness, his colon cancer that eventually killed him. And when he came to that point, he didn't know another God, but the God she brought to him. And so he prayed, God of my wife, help me. And then I will never forget I'd be in the room and he would be panting and wailing. His last week of his life in the hospital room. So much pain. They couldn't give him any more morphine or they would kill him. And my grandma would come into the room after he would be praying God of my wife, please help me. And she would come to his room close to him at his bedside, grab his hand, caress his forehead, kiss him, put her cheek against his, and whisper to him, I'm here. I love you. His wailing, his pain would subside. I'm looking at this image right now. He would stop panting and, and wailing from the pain. He calmed down. He had peace because God came to his bedside in the person of my grandmother. God was there by his bedside. He wasn't alone. He experienced peace. He felt loved. He felt completeness. He was able to die knowing that he was loved and that he would be okay. because of who loved him, my grandmother. Adam experienced that very same fulfillment through Eve. And that is the fulfillment that we can only experience through the presence of God in the other. And no spiritual hogwash talk in the clouds 
will give you what you need unless you learn to find it in the God who is a relationship to find this God in a relationship. You may find yourself in that same situation that my grandfather found himself in, in pain, panting from whatever cancer may be eating away at you. Let me be my grandma for you today because I am not a single man. I am married to the church, which means I am married to each one of you. So in whatever cancer that you have had befall you in your life, that is slowly killing you, let this video now be a way for me to place my cheek my beautiful cheek, my rosy cheek against yours and whisper to you, I'm here. You are not alone. I love you. Everything is going to be okay. You will be okay. Hello, hello!